Hey everybody, my name is Natalie Crandall and I'm a professional ballroom dancer as well as fitness instructor. So this video is going to be all about strength training and muscle toning. So there's a bit of a misconception out there about strength training and especially for women. A lot of times we think that if we go to the gym and we do the strength training, we're going to be super bulky and big. And obviously for guys, it's a little bit easier to get there. And for women, we can get super bulky and big but that's if we have a super strict diet regimen and we also are using a lot of heavy weights with low reps. What we're gonna do here today is focus solely on our body weight. So whatever weight you have on your body, that's all you get today. No extra dumbbells or anything like that. When we focus on using just body weight and we do a lot of reps, what we're doing is we're toning the muscles instead of promoting muscle growth and muscle mass. So let's hear about a few benefits about strength training and why it's something that I really, really love to do. So when we do strength training, what we're doing is we're actually building up the muscle endurance and strength. And what that does is it preserves our bone density and it prevents fragility and weakness in our bones and in our joints. So for instance, if we have weak ankles, it's most likely because we don't have strong calf muscles. When we build up the muscles around the joints and especially around those bones, your body's going to feel super strong, super stable, especially for those women when you put those heels back on, your legs are going to feel super strong. So we're going to go through a few different exercises today and we're going to focus on three main actions. We're going to focus on those calf raises. We're also going to do some pulsing and pulsation exercises. And then finally, some jumping and pushing exercises. So what we're gonna focus on first is calf raises. So again, I kind of mentioned that already, but when we do calf raises, we're building up that muscle that's directly connected to our ankle. So we have strong calves, we have better ankle mobility and stability. What we also build up when we do calf raises is we build up what's called explosive power and explosive strength. Now what that is, is exerting a maximum amount of effort in a minimal amount of time. So when your teacher is asking you to move from this foot to this foot on a quick and, you better have some strong muscles that can push you from one foot to the other foot. And that's exactly what we're going to focus on here with the calf raises. So I'll have you put your tennis shoes on, whatever you need to do, and we're going to get started. So, all right, so let's first find a parallel position. So I want those feet right in front of the other. No turned out, no turned in. We want it nice and parallel. So those smooth and standard dancers, you guys know exactly where you need to be. And we're gonna keep maintain, keep and maintain neutral hips. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn to the side so it's a bit easier for you to see. I'm gonna start with that, let's start with the right foot. So we're gonna start with that right foot out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go down into a low squat position and a parallel squat position. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna have 90 degrees on that front leg, the ball of the foot is on the back. Now we're gonna do calf raises simply on the front foot. So I want you to lower down, you're going to come to the ball of the foot on the front leg, stand up, engage those legs with both calves up, and release down. Let's do that about six more times. So let's go down, ball of the foot, rise up, hold, release. Drop down, ball of the foot, rise up, release. Ball of the foot, rise up, hold it, release. Let's do two more times. Drop down, ball of foot, hold, release. Now this last one I want you to hold up in the air. Here, hold it, hold it, hold it. Go ahead and reverse to the other side. So, you should already feel that that's burning and building up some sort of sensation in your calf, and this is perfect. So, again, find those neutral hips, one foot in front of the other. We're gonna go ahead and drop down to that squat position, parallel squat. So again, 90 degrees over that front foot, the back foot, the ball of the foot. So we're going to raise up to the ball of the foot in the front, straighten the legs, and release down. You might have to shorten your stance a little, which is fine. Bend down, ball of foot, rise up, release five more times. Drop down, ball of foot, rise up, release. Drop down, ball of foot, rise up, release. You've got three more. Drop down, ball of foot, rise up, release. Drop down, ball of foot, rise up. The last one, bend down, ball of foot, and hold it, hold it, hold it, and turn. Good job. All right, 
so we've got those calf raises in our parallel position. Now we're gonna move to a squat position. So a squat position, you want your knees over your toes and we're just simply gonna sit back like we sit back in the chair. So again, I'm gonna turn to the side for you. Let's face the right side first. Sitting back in that, that chair position. What I want you to focus on is that your bum is not sticking out and my chest is forward. If you have this problem, go ahead and find your core, suck it all in, drop the bum back, find a nice long spine. You can slightly lean over as well. What we're gonna do here is called rocking chair squats. So we're gonna rock back to the heels and up to the toes. Back to the heels, up to the toes. So let's find that squat position. We're gonna do this 10 times. Here we go. So we rock back first and come to the ball of the foot. Rock back, ball of foot. So this is also gonna engage your core, ball of foot. Rock back, ball of foot. That's three. Rock back, ball of foot. Once you get up to the whoo, bottom of foot, you can hold it a little and release. These are 10. Rock up. You're halfway. That's five. Four. Stay with it. Three. Two. Last one. Let's hold it, hold it, hold it. Woo, my legs are shaking. And release. So that's another exercise you can do to keep those calf muscles nice and strong, keep them nice and toned. So let's go ahead and move into the last position we have, which is a plie position. So feet turned out, much like you would do in a second position in ballet. So let's go ahead and drop down. You're gonna have those feet come a little closer, you can see me. So drop down, knees are wide. From here, I want you to just simply raise and do alternate, alternative, alternating, can't talk, calf raises. So let's go left and to the right. Or if you're mirroring me, it's right to left. So here, this one's a little bit easier, but because maybe you have more strength in your inner thighs, especially as a dancer. So here, good. Let's do five, four, three, two, Last one, go ahead and try to rise up to both calves, balls of feet, engaging the calves, engaging those inner thigh adductor muscles, core engaged, that's three, Woo. two, one. Go ahead and release. Shake it out, maybe you wanna grab some water. This stuff is already getting my heart rate going. So again, that's another thing about cross training, especially using strength training, is we get to target those specific muscles. That's exactly what we're gonna do now when we start to add a pulsing or pulsation exercise. Ooh. So, grab some water if you're doing this with me. All right, so when we add a pulsation exercise, what we're doing is we're really, really, really building up that muscle endurance. When we add pulsing into the exercises, we promote muscle endurance and strength and we prevent the fragility and weakness and the fatigue of the muscles. What happens too when we add the pulsing is we get to target those very, very, very specific muscles that we have that maybe they just need a little bit more toning, especially those inner thigh muscles, especially the calf muscles, maybe some things in our obliques as well. So we're gonna go through those same three positions, parallel position, squat position, and a plie position. So let's go ahead and start with that parallel position, turning to the right side. I want that right foot in front, again, parallel. No turn in, no turn out, neutral hips. We're gonna drop down to that parallel squat and we're gonna pulse 12 times right here. So hands on hips, hands up here. Maybe you want a little extra core workout and you wanna bring those hands up, but otherwise you're gonna pulse down, pulse down. So when we pulse, we're not coming all the way to straight. We're just simply bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. Good, it's a controlled bounce. I'm not dropping down, but I'm using my core to hold me up. Good, that's four, three, two, and one. Switch to the other side. Right away, try not to lose it. Not, try not to lose that fire that you're building in your body. Drop down, shoulders down. Let's go, 12 counts. Hold it. So you can listen to your favorite song. You can maybe listen to a round while you're doing this, going through the routines in your head as you focus on building those inner thigh muscles. Again, bring the arms up for an extra ab workout. That's three, two, and one. My legs are already burning. Hopefully yours are too. So let's 
So we're gonna go ahead and move into a squat position now. We're gonna add that pulsing sensation. But this time, instead of just the squat, we're gonna go into what's called a curtsy squat. So we're gonna go ahead, stand on that right foot, bring the left one behind. So you're to your knee, bring that left one behind. And again, a nice little exercise to find the perfect one, perfect little curtsy, is to be in a triangle position, then rotate your body, and that is exactly where you wanna be. So maybe you do that for the other side, rotating, finding that curtsy position. So when you do that, your inner thighs are gonna be touching, so they're gonna be super engaged and you're gonna find the ball of the foot in the back. And here, we're simply gonna pulse. You're gonna pulse down and down. Now my weight here is about 70, 30. 70% is in the front leg, because I really wanna focus on around the hip. And again, I'm squeezing those inner thighs. So don't just hang out here, no space. Squeeze them together like you've got a piece of paper in between, or better yet, a $100 bill in between. And we're just gonna pulse 12 times. That's three. Two, one, step away, and other side, down. Good. So try to stay here, stay as controlled as you can. Again, you can always bring those arms up for an extra ab workout, holding it up, and an arm workout. That's three, two, one, good job. All right, let's go to our final, final uh, foot position. We're gonna move into the plie squat position. So again, finding that second position like you would in ballet. And here we're just gonna do plie full squats. So we drop down and we start to pulse and pulse, pulse and pulse. Now again, I'm not coming to standing, I'm staying low. And I'm really thinking about using my inner thigh muscles and right under my thumb to squeeze up and control it down. So when I go down, I'm not releasing everything. I'm not releasing my bum back but I'm nice and neutral. My spine is super straight. And I'm down and down. So your inner thighs should be burning. Even your calves a little bit because they're holding you right around the knee. Good. Again, you can bring those arms up for a little extra arm and ab workout. That's four, three, two, one. Whew. Go ahead, shake it out. All right, so if you've been doing this video with me the whole time and your leg like, should be burning, which is a good thing. So we're gonna move into our final action, which is a pushing and a jumping action. So you might not think that we do a lot of jumping or pushing when we're dancing, but for instance, if we do jive or maybe we do quick step, there's tons of jumping and pushing and there's movement from foot to foot. Again, that explosive energy where you exert a maximum amount of effort in a minimal amount of time. And that's exactly what jumping and pushing promotes in the body. It builds up that explosive strength and that explosive energy. So that when you do need to quickly, or your teacher gives you some super fast timing, your body is ready, it's toned, it's strong, and it's able to get there at the exact time that you need it to be there. So we're gonna do those same three foot, foot positions, parallel, squat, and plie. And we're gonna do first parallel jump squats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that parallel position. One foot in front of the other. We're gonna drop down to that parallel squat. My arms are gonna be down. I'm going to jump as I rise my arms, raise my arms up, I'm gonna switch in the air and land on the other foot. Up, switch, land. Now, the key to this is to not land on a flat foot because you can injure your lower back, you can injure your spine, and it's just not gonna feel very good on your knees either. So what I want you to really, really focus on from here, as I jump up, I switch. Notice I'm on the ball of both foot, feet, and I land softly. Switch, land softly. When we do that, we promote ankle mobility and agil agility and strength. So make sure you're landing on the ball of the foot. Let's go ahead and try it. We're gonna do five, only five of these, because trust me, we're gonna get your heart rate going. And also jumping and pushing, it ignites that cardiovascular system and you're gonna burn a ton more calories. So let's go ahead, right side. We're gonna swing the arms down, up, switch, up, switch, up, switch. Really jump, up, land, up, land. That last two, last one. Nice, all right, we're gonna go right away into those jump squats. I only did five, because we're gonna do five more right here. So find that squat position. Again, my bum is not out. I'm nice and tucked in. Straight spine. 
I'm going to go back, jump up. Again, I'm going to land on the ball of the foot and sink back down. Let's go ahead and try five of those. Here we go. Up, down, up, down. Inhale, exhale. Last two. Last one. All right. Good job. Let's go right away into that last foot position, our plie position. Feet are turned out. Now here, no more jumping. We're going to focus on the pushing action. So I want you to find that plie squat. You're going to go ahead, push off of that right foot, onto the left foot, and pointing that toe. Down, push. Now when you, can, when you do this, you can wrap the arms go down. Again, you can keep them up. Or maybe you want to bring them to a T. Whatever you want, you can increase your workout that way. But what I want you to focus on is kind of incorporating everything here. We have a little bit of a pulse, a push, and a calf raise. So let's go ahead, down, push to the left. Sit it back, down, really sink that bum low. And again, neutral spine, push. Neutral spine, push. That's three, two, one. Go ahead, other side, push, right foot. Hold yourself here, pull up. I should be able to hold that there like I could stop here. And release down, hold it, release down, hold it. Last three, two, and one. There you go, land back down, stand up. All right, so hopefully you guys had a great workout already. I know that I'm sweating, my muscles feel it for sure. And just know that it really only takes this amount of time. It takes, what is it, 20 minutes to get a full workout, especially with strength training. So hopefully you learned a little bit about it, about how it's important and how it can really benefit your dancing, how you're not gonna get super bulky. You're just gonna tone and lean out the muscles that you already have. So thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to subscribe to Dance Vision. We've got tons of videos right now full of amazing knowledge from all sorts of incredible dancers. So be sure to check it out. But for now, catch your breath grab some water and I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep dancing. Thank you so much.